Hey guys, today we are going to talk about four iconic master reprints and see what happened to the price. So we will start with this card. Now it has been reprinted in a standard set. So the card itself is not uncommon. Now if you own boxes of that set, you're kind of screwed now because the better artwork is now available. So Lorwyn for most people, the artwork is better than the reprint. Now, Iconic Masters has the same artwork. This came as a total surprise to most people in the MTG Finance community. As you can see from that graph, people were investing in it. They were buying this up, especially the foil, which at one point was over $1,000 and has since dropped because now you can get foils of the same exact artwork from Iconic Masters. Also interesting to note, uh, it's a surprise, yes, but it's been done before with cards like Bloodbraid Elf, uh, Eternal Masters used the, or it's been done a few times. Uh, Bloodbraid Elf was the FNM promo, was taken in Plane Chase. They share, I forget which one was first. I'm guessing the FNM promo was first, and then Plane Chase used the same artwork, which many considered better. I believe Eternal Masters has a different artwork. I just bought a few copies of those, and then we'll talk about those. So, modern as a whole, I would heavily suggest not investing in, not buying. I am going to sell the majority of my modern cards at GP Houston, and maybe I'll videotape it if you guys are interested. Uh, GP Houston is coming soon. I want to hold my cards a little longer because the Shocklands and the Fetchlands, they should at least retain their value. And some of the other stuff, assuming Curse Catcher is not reprinted, that card I think is going to be worth quite a bit of money, and I own a few dozen of those cards. Grove of the Burn Willows, you can see from the $75, $85, and now it's back down to $35. The Iconic, vers Iconic Masters version is actually cheaper at $25. So this is the original version from Future Sight. Some interesting points to note is its price spiral or decline was due to the fact that it wasn't seeing as much play or the decks that wanted to play it weren't doing as well. Combine that with the reprint, you're looking at a loser in terms of value. If you had this card in 2016, you probably have lost half its value, more than half. And that's a bad feeling, but that's the truth. Every reprint, the reprints are incredibly aggressive, which I support. You might say, why do you support that? Well, if I'm going to get out of modern and I'm just going to buy reserve list cards and I'm just going to use my shop to buy collections at 50 or 60% of what the collection retails at, then I'm fine because no way it drops. Well, okay, in this case, it did drop 50%. So the buy list around me, uh, there's one place that's very good to buy list and that's who I'm probably going to sell to at JP Houston. Yeah, I'm probably going to sell to them because they're honest, they're good, and I've worked with them in the past a few times on thousands of dollars of Magic cards, so I trust them. But I'm getting out of modern. I don't want any extra copies of any cards. I have extra copies of Tamagoy, if that was a mistake. I have extra copies of Fetchlands. So far, it's been okay, but I could see them reprinting Fetchlands in another standard set. I could see them doing it. I don't think it's out of the question. Uh, fetch lands, I'm talking about the Cons of Tarkares or the Ally Fetch lands. I do not have that many. I only have play sets of the enemy Zendikar ones. And before the reprint of the Modern Masters 2017 reprint, I actually didn't have that many. I didn't. I only had my Catacombs and my Marsh Flats. The other, the the blue ones, I didn't have because they were just outrageously expensive. Now they are, are more affordable, so it's a win-win for me. If you want to take a car, look at a card that spiked and just got hammered, it would be this one. So it has went up to fifty dollars from some time, and now it is back down to thirty-two. Probably going to trend down to twenty-five. I believe you can get the iconic master one for under twenty on eBay right now. Great card, fantastic card, 
and it was unbanned as you can see you can probably figure out what exactly when it was exactly unbanned from modern i like the fact that on cards that can be unbanned will immediately spike in price that gives me hope for blood braid elf and that gives me hope for jc mind sculptor maybe in the future sometime they will be unbanned i'm not sure when but they are incredibly affordable they have been reprinted a lot uh, eternal masters and then iconic uh, from the vault what uh, iconic or something i want to say iconic masters but it wasn't in iconic masters from the vault yeah it was from from the vault 20 is what they called it and from eternal masters it was one of the bigger chase cards overall i mean this card's been reprinted a bunch as well it's been in plain chase or was it no a dual deck the jace versus chandra dual deck and then it's been in the anthology version of that dual deck i do not see uh sometimes i get questions of hey can you do mtg finance for a living if you can i don't see you making six figures and i really don't see you doing that well in the future especially given so you might say oh legacy 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 but just like a retro video game that's no longer being printed you don't have that the population for legacy is not going to grow substantially unless something changes with the reserve list there's only x amount of players that can play legacy at any given time and some of those players have some of the people with the cards are actually not players they're just speculators and as it gets more and more expensive what you're going to see see is less players and more speculators and that's what's happened in the past all right, this card was super expensive. It hasn't plummeted in price, so I'm a little surprised. Now, the Iconic Masters version is around $40, so yes, that one is half off. But if this one was to follow the rest of them, it should only be like $60 or $50 or a small premium. I believe it'll get there. I don't think this is a good investment at all, obviously. One of the key components about MTG Finance is as time goes on and people have more data and more information and it's easier and there's less paywalls. It's not that people are getting better. It's just the fact that Wizard of the Coast has taken the secondary market and said, hey, this is ours. Get out. And that's good. Um, that is pretty good. So at the end of the day, I am very happy that I didn't open a store previous to this one because I would have been slaughtered. Because every store was stocking up on modern staples, right? That's just a matter of fact. Because modern was spiking and everything was going up in price. And the best example I have of this was Tamagoy when it was first reprinted in the original Modern Masters, I think in 2013. At the GP, vendors actually inflated the price of the card so the card's been reprinted there's more supply now or is there the card price after the reprint on tamagoy went up that is ridiculous if you think about it right it just got more supply how does it go up and people say well the best the best uh, if you open tamagoy if you know what goes well with a tamagoy free out of tamagoy right and vendors felt the exact same way. And modern was exploding. It was growing. We're not seeing the growth in Magic the Gathering like we did in 2013 during RTR. RTR boxes, you can still get for under 70 bucks. I mean, that should tell you everything you need to know about where we are in Magic. Now, where do I see you making money? I see money in speculation and higher-end buyers. Uh, artwork. And I've been introduced to artwork related to magic recently and there is a market for it and if i already have the clientele the, the clients literally are my friends and i pitched it to them and they all love it they own dentists they own emergency rooms and work at hospitals they own like places where they can easily buy a 500 hundred dollar painting and no one cares about it accounting doesn't it's like all right that's fine um i also i tutored the son of the youngest son of the person who owns the Houston Rockets now. And he's always asking about like, not him, the son's always asking about it. And 
they own a lot of restaurants. And if I could get one painting, one altered painting in every single restaurant he owns, we would be set for an entire year of commissions. That's how many restaurants he owns. He owns Rainforest Cafe, Landry's. That's why I eat at those places because, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, he owns the Houston Rockets and he's doing an esports team, which I'm, I probably should ask him if I want to. I definitely want to get involved with his new League of Legends esports team. So got to pitch a little bit. Uh, I've been very lazy. I got to make my website first. But there's a lot of opportunities, but I don't feel like it's in modern and I don't feel like it's in standard i think those opportunities are incredibly limited and it's definitely not in selling boosted boxes i can tell you that much rtr is 70 dollars all the time with free stuff and free shipping i mean it's not even 70 there's other discounts like there's a five percent discount if you buy x and then you get free stuff i mean let's call it 65 with free shipping well i mean rtr is a very old set it shouldn't be 65 dollars. anyway that's a tangent i'm not going to continue on with my rant about how Boxes are just terrible value right now. Anyway, bye guys.